Okay, so uh, maybe we can we can start. Uh, last class we were discussing. So last two classes now we have been discussing on pandas, and we saw that pandas is uh, a very useful or very basic foundational library that we can use for data science projects, and it is generally used for all sorts of things uh, before we start machine learning. Okay, so loading our data and displaying our data in different forms, uh, doing some pre-processing tasks on it, uh, doing some visualization, uh, trying to do descriptive statistics and pre-processing uh, values like uh, dealing with missing data. And uh, we've seen all these small, small things uh, within Pandas and we've seen how to get it done uh, uh, and so far. Uh, today we will look into two more I, two more very interesting ideas. We'll look into filters, group by, and merge, and then we'll look into passing timestamps. So th this would I think quickly get done, and we'll continue our class with discussing on uh, Matplotlib, which is our third foundational library that we use for uh, data science. Okay. So before we go ahead, uh, do any of you have any questions uh, or is some uh, not clear with pandas. Okay, great. So we'll go ahead uh, with our discussion. Maybe quickly we can just go through this material uh, to see if uh, uh, we get some revision out of it. So we saw that uh, within pandas, there are two main kind of data structures. We've got series and then we've got data frames. Series is just one dimension, data frames is multiple dimensions. And we saw we can do basic operations like getting the index, get the column, so how to create a data frame and so on. We then did basic operations on data frames that is accessing from the data frame, how do I take a, a particular series and access those series? How do I create new data frames? How do I create new columns within a given data frame by doing some operation on the previous columns? How to filter certain aspects of series uh, using relational operators and see that it creates um, a Boolean values series? How to remove objects from, how to remove columns from the data frame? And so to either remove it using pop or delete or add new columns using the insert command. Then we started saying that, okay, let us take uh, the movie lens data as a use case and see how, what we can do with that. So we saw how to uh, read a CSV uh, as a data frame into pandas. The head function helps us to see the, the initial first rows. Then we saw two kinds of uh, uh, two places or two ways to be to be able to access the different rows, either using the I lock, which is the index location or the lock LOC, which was I think we had seen that earlier. We loaded three data sets, we loaded uh, three, we load three data frames, the movies, the tags and the ratings. Uh, we remove the timestamp. We said, okay, this is something that we'll deal later. So today's class, we'll look at timestamp and we'll get an idea of what that is. You can go ahead. Then we saw we can do some descriptive statistics. There is a function called as dot describe within pandas that either when you give a series or when you give a data frame can give you useful statistics like count, mean, standard deviation, mean, minimum value, 25 percentile, 50 percentile, 75 percentile, max value, and so on. Then we saw that instead of describe, where it gives us a table only for description, but uh, does not allow us to take that uh, and pass it as an input to other things. We saw that we can individually find out these values by taking whatever quantity that we're interested in and then applying a dot mean or minimum or max functions to the end of it to get the answers. We talked a bit about correlation. We saw how correlation can be calculated within pandas. Go ahead. In within data cleaning, we saw that uh, we saw interesting functions like is null, uh, any functions, and so on. We saw movies and ratings, they don't have missing values, but tags had a few missing values. And 
uh, when tags had a few missing values, we could filter them out and we could remove them or we could drop these rows so that our tags would not have any missing values after this point. Now, dropping is just one way of getting rid of missing values, but there are other ways, other interesting ways, which we will look into data pre-processing on how we can uh, fill missing values. We talked about data visualization. So one very useful feature, especially with uh, uh, categorical features, very one very useful tool that comes with categorical features within pandas is the dot value counts, which takes the categorical variable adds or gives us the frequency of how many times it has appeared in the even data frame and sorts them based on their frequency. And we saw, okay, that this is interesting, but if I, we could see a plot of this, it would be better. We saw that within, from within pandas, we can invoke matplotlib or graphs, uh, uh, as if they are inherent to what pandas makes. Okay. So something like we take the data frame ratings, we can do a histogram by saying dot hist, define what column we are interested in to see the histogram. And we saw this graph and we, we, we removed some insights from this graph as well. We saw uh, histogram kind of plots. We saw box plots. And yeah, this is where I think we had stopped. Then we looked at genres and I think we created uh, yeah, uh, a bar chart of the different genres. Okay. So this was a quick review of what we had done so far. Uh, today we'll, we'll just go ahead and we'll see how things work out. Okay. So we look at uh, filters. Uh, we have already seen how filters work out, but let's look at one more example. So in this, the, the three data frames that we have movies, ratings, and tags, we are interested on the ratings data frame. And we're interested in what is the rating or what are the rules that give uh, uh, ratings more than or equal to four. Okay, so if we want to find out what are the highly rated ratings, we can easily do that by taking the pandas uh, series here, ratings, rating, greater than or equal to four. So what this would return to us is it would return to us a series of trues and false. Okay. Wherever rating is greater or equal to four, we'll have a true. Wherever it does not have greater than or equal to four, it will have a false. Now with this as one of the inputs is highly rated, we pass that to the ratings selection block. So here for ratings, when we select this part, we will just be, this would just return to us all the true values. Okay, Maybe I can break this down into multiple places and we can see what this looks like. Okay, so is highly rated as a series of two and false. And if we just take the first part, the ratings of is highly rated, it gives us uh, it returns to us all the places where we have found uh, this to be true. Again, the false part does not show you. So here we see that we have index zero because index zero is true. And then directly it jumps to index two. It does not go to index one because index one shows false. So this will give us a filtered list of all the movies or all the users who have given all the movies uh, rating of four or greater. So from this, if we want further subset, so if I'm very specific and I'm interested in saying, okay, from, uh, you, uh, you know, find me all the rows from unit 30 to 50. Uh, so this 30 to 50 does not represent the serial number here. The 30 to 50 represents the order in which this comes. So one, two, three, four, like this. Uh, sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, like this. And whenever we get 30 to 50, this is the selected subset of that region. So this is how we would probably use filter. So we saw this is a way of filtering based on a Boolean criteria. And then from this Boolean criteria, extracting a certain subset from the data frame. There can be different criteria again. So in this case, let's say we are interested in finding out all the movies that contain the genre animation. Okay. So we go back to the movies 
data frame and we look at these genres and we see these genres have different uh, so there's a list of uh, different tags that the movie is assigned and it is separated by pipes and if you're interested in finding out all animation movies we can write a command something like this so we are, we are trying to select all movies which have the genre animation so we go to the movies data set and we'll say okay in the movies data set i'm interested in the genres column so we say we we do that subset by doing this part okay saying that okay just return to me the feature genres okay for this feature uh we are interesting to do a string operation so dot str gives me access to this genre in terms of string because i know that this genre is object so we, we had just seen this when i do movies.info we see the genres is the data type of genres is object it means it is already in string format now if i want to implement a string function over this i just get access to that using dot str and dot str as a function called as contains okay so contains is something like uh, it, it gives me a boolean answer saying that if something is part of this or not so if i give a substring so in this case i'm giving a substring of animation if animation is part of the biggest string then it will return to me true otherwise it will return to me false okay when we say str dot contains animation it will go through the list and wherever it finds animation it will return to us true or false values based on that maybe i can again in this case also as split the cell like so okay so when we run this it gives us okay true false false and so on so wherever uh, it finds animation it will return to true otherwise it will return false okay. and to this list when we take that and we say okay movies and for this we say return is animation it gives us this list okay and for this list it returns to us all the places where we have uh, animation as true okay. so we have movie 0 and then directly we move to movie 12 which is uh, uh, adventure animation children movie and so on okay. and then from this set we can choose another subset by selecting the index of the rows that we are interested in we go from 5 to 15 as it was earlier we see that okay from 5 to 15 these are the set of movies which are uh, which have a genre of animation okay also within this set we can see what are the first 15 values and by doing a dot head on this thing let's go another very very interesting feature is the group by or aggregate feature uh, just let me check out if i have some notes on the ipad Thank you. Just one second, I will share my iPad screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Okay, great. So uh, this is uh, how we would look at the, the the next feature. So pandas has a very interesting feature called as the group by feature, and this is the way we would write the command to to get as group by. 
So we write uh, the name of the data frame dot group by, and then we pass a certain uh, we pass a certain feature to this data frame. Okay, a certain column to this data frame, and when we do this, pandas will try to uh, you know it will try to group according to these orders. Okay, and we will look at what this example is. Then after grouping it, we can then do a further selection that after grouping by order, the name of the feature is order. After grouping by this order, I want to look at external price or uh, uh, EXT price and then take its sum. Okay. So this is what the command group by would look like. Let us look at an example what this seems to be doing. Okay. So here in this case, we have a input data frame. This is our DF. So we see that DF has multiple columns. It has account, order, and external price. What we're doing is we are asking uh, pandas to group by order. So first it will do, what it will do is it will split this entire data set into as many parts as it finds different values of order. So if we see order, we have uh, three distinct values. We have uh, one, 10,001. We've got 10,005 and we've got 10,006. So first, before grouping it, it will find all the, since we said group by order, it will find all the instances of order of one value and keep that separated. Okay. That is what we get here, three price. Further, since we are interested in only the EXT price, not account, uh, it will just take EXT price along with this. Okay, so it will split these two ideas. Post that we are applying a dot sum. So for each of these criteria, it will sum what the EXT price is. So it will say, okay, for uh, after taking the splitting this and applying uh, the sum operation, we see that 10,001 adds up to 576.12, 10,005 adds up to 8,185.49 and 110 uh, 10,006 adds up to 3,724.49. That is the second part of it. That is applying an operation. And finally, it combines them all together and gives us this result. So basically, from, from this set, when we are interested to do this, we are writing group by order. So it groups by order and apply sum on the EXT price and give me the results. Okay, so this is what group by is doing. So it's a fairly, fairly uh, complex idea that we are trying to get done by using a very simple command. Okay, so uh, let's let's see how that looks like in uh, in, in our code. Okay. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll try to group according to our rating. Okay. So if you look at our ratings uh, uh, data frame, if you look at our ratings data frame, we see that we have user ID, movie ID, and ratings. Okay. So first, as we'll do is okay. Let us find out how many ratings we have for, uh, or how many movies we have with a particular rating. Okay, so how many movies for 0.5 rating, how many movies for 3.5 rating and so on. Okay, and one way to achieve that is doing this. So if you look here, I'm using the group by command, but I'm, I'm calling two different inputs here. I'm saying that group by movie ID and rating and, uh, okay, no, I'm saying for this subset, okay, for, I'm not taking the entire ratings. I say within the ratings, I'm interested within these two ideas. I'm skipping out user ID within for these two ideas, for these two features group by rating. Okay. And whatever result you get, count them. So here, when we do that, what it does is it says, okay, if we group by rating, then it will split the rating into multiple parts. So specifically here, we will have as many parts as we have different values of ratings. So we have one for 0.5, for one, for 1.52 and so on. And for each group, it just counts how many elements are there in that group, which effectively gives me uh, this, uh, this idea, right? That 0.5 rating, we have these many numbers. One rating, we have these many numbers and so on. 
we had done the same thing using something called as value counts. But uh, yeah, yeah uh, here also uh, with, re, with group by also it achieves, it gives us this part. So this is just the count part, but we could have done multiple operations with this, not just count. We could have added the values together and so on. In this context, adding the movie ID does not make sense. Counting them gives us an idea of how many of them exist within the group. Uh, in the future, you will see that group by is actually very, very useful uh, to do multiple things for, for our descriptive analysis. Uh, this is another example. Uh, I think it's the... Ah, so this example is the opposite actually. Here what we are doing is, we are saying, okay, for this subset of movie ID and rating, let us group by movie ID. Okay. So can maybe uh, uh, one of you, uh, either one of you, try and explain what this command is trying to do. And how is this different from this one? And how would you interpret the results? Okay, uh, we are just taking column movie ID and ratings. Mm -hmm. And based on movie ID, we are counting. We group by uh, movie IDs. And how much is a count? Okay, excellent. So here we'll see that, okay, so this gives us an idea uh, from the ratings data set, from the ratings data frame, how many people have rated this movie? Okay. Here we had done this, how many people have rated 0.5? How many movies people have rated 0.5? We saw okay, these many movies people have rated 0.5. Now we are saying that movie ID 1 is rated by these many people. So 57,309 people have rated movie ID 1. 24,228 people have rated movie ID 2 and so on. Okay, so since we are grouping my movie ID, it, it, you know, uh, it just gives us a count of how many people have rated this. So again, uh, we are just looking at the first 10 values. This would have, you know, so many values. But we are just looking at the first 10 to see how things work out. Now, okay, so, and for the same, for the same movie count, if we look at the tail, so this is the head, this is the tail. When you look at the tail, we see that, okay, later movies, or movie IDs with later numbers, is just rated by one person. Probably because uh, this was the latest uh, survey uh, and people have, or uh, these movies were added later. That is why we have only one rating. And so maybe those could be reasons why we have this. Okay. The next interesting concept uh, is, so uh, do you have any questions with Drupal? Okay. okay. So I'll, I'll share my screen again and uh, we'll see, uh, how merge works out. Okay. The next thing to look at is merge. And merge is, is basically, if you have seen how, uh, how SQL works out, that is when we have a relational databases and uh, uh, within that relational database, we have two different tables that have a certain uh, feature which is common, a certain column name that is common. How can I merge different data sets to get different outputs? Okay. So we can do that in multiple ways. We can do an inner join, a left outer join, a right outer join, or a full outer join, depending upon what we are interested in. Okay. So here, uh, DF1 represents the left circle df2 represents the right circle okay and let's say we are interested that df1 and df2 they have a certain column column 2 which is common to both of these things okay so df1 also has a feature called as call 1 call 2 and df2 also has a feature called as call 2 okay if they have nothing in common let's say if there is there is no feature in common then they have, uh, they, then there is no intersection as such. Okay, and joining two such, uh, uh, joining two such, uh, what do you say, joining two such or merging two such data frames would in fact give us a, a, a vertical stack or a horizontal, a vertical stack of such, okay, where we will have uh, DF1 having certain features, 
df2 having certain features and wherever df2 entry is there everywhere df1 would be an nan and wherever df1 entries were there everywhere for df2 would be nan okay that would be the case in general when there is nothing common but uh, when we are trying to merge when something is common okay when the when a certain feature is common then we have the choice of choosing what what exactly we want to merge on in the first case when we do an inner join it says that only return to us rows where both of them have the same value okay where column 2 has similar value to uh, so uh, df1 has same column 2 as df2 has same column 2 okay and we will combine these two commonalities and after combining these two commonalities we will return the inner join we will return we will return those common rows and that is one option inner join the other option is left outer join left outer join means uh, now also we'll merge based on column 2 but wherever uh, df1 has column 2 values only those we will return whereas we will skip out all the uh, unique values that df2 may have and df1 does not have those column values maybe this sounds uh, strange but I, i hope when we go to the example this would this would make sense okay other option is right outer join for right outer join we will see uh, df2 and we will say okay for whatever column uh, names are present or whatever rows are present for df2 we will take that into account and we will skip df1 and full outer join would mean that irrespective we will take uh, the union of everything okay so if there are certain row values that df1 does not have and df2 has we will take those also and if df2 has certain row values and df1 does not have we'll take those also so either ways we will take the entire thing okay so this would be the union okay. let me let me show you how that would look like in code okay so here uh, we have an interesting place where if you see tags data set and you see the head of tags data set we have user id movie id and tag when we look at movies head we have movie id title and genres okay so the common element in both of these guys is movie id okay and let's say we want to okay so let's say we want to merge these two together and the way we want to merge them is we want movie i we want the movies data frame to represent our left uh, our left circle so this would be df1 and our tags data set to be our right circle that is it would be our df2 okay now if we just want to search that okay uh, from the tags find the location where movie id is 1 that means we will go through this entire list of tags and we will see where are the rows where movie id is 1 okay so we see that okay we have movie id as 1 for row uh, 2306 where user id 791 has tagged movie 1 as owned okay so they have taken toy story and they have given the tag owned then someone else has taken toy story and said that this is they have given a tag imdb top 250 few people have uh, given that id pixar pixar time travel and so on okay so so many people 697 people have given movie id one different amount of tags okay now what i want to do is uh, so this is just an idea of uh, what uh, merge will do we want to merge uh, these together okay so here we want to merge movies and tags So we're saying df1 dot merge with df2. That is movies dot merge with tags, and the common feature uh, or common column that we will merge by is the movie id column. Okay, and we want to do an inner merge. So what an inner merge will do is wherever both of these guys exist. Okay, wherever movie id is one for user id, and movie id is one for movie uh, for sorry movie id is one for tags, and movie id is one for movies. it will merge them together okay so here our left one comes here so we see all the all the columns of our left uh, of our left data frame that is 
movie ID, title, and genres. And then we see that we have additional two columns that have come in. And these two columns have come from the tax data set. So it took first uh, one, Price story, 1995, all these genres. And we say, okay, user ID one. So 791 and tag owned has come here as one row. Then everything same here. And then 1048 and IMDB 250 has come here. Okay. So the first 69 rows, uh, first 697 uh, rows will be having same values on the left end and the right end would vary depending upon this. Okay, so let me see if we are just able to extract that. Uh, let me execute this. And create a new cell below and say, okay, T dot I lock from, from our resultant T, we want an index location from maybe 696 to 705 so we can see that 696 so there are 697 entries here of movie id1 so around that point 696 we have only one toy story after that followed by the next movie jumanji okay so jumanji 1995 different users have given different tags to uh, the second movie and so on so you see what has happened is we are doing an inner join and it has merged these two data sets over the column movie ID and keeping uh, left as movies, right as tags and inner means well both are common. So now what, what, what I mean that both are common is within the tags data set, within the tags data set, there may be some movie IDs that are not present within the movies data set. And if that is the case, all those movie IDs, uh, which has come from tags, which is not present in movie ID here, are not shown in this list. Okay. So we will have a, we, this list T will have only those elements which are available in both movie ID and user ID. There may be some movies that are here in movies, which may not have been present in user ID and they have not come. Okay, then we choose in it. Now, depending upon what we want, if we want those movies, if we want those movies where it is present in movies but it is not present in tags, we will do a left inner join. Okay, so here for the how parameter, we can give different things. So let me show you. Let's say if I want to see what are the commands I have to give inside, I can say do a help on movies dot merge. With the help on movies dot merge. Okay, when we do that. We see the how criteria, and we can give left, right, outer, or inner. Okay, so if you want a left, left outer join, you just put left here. If you put a right outer join, then what will happen is it will along with inner, along with all these common values, it will also give us those uh, rows where movie is not present but tags is present. So what will happen in those cases? We'll have movie ID. Title and genres would be NAM. We will have user ID and we'll have tag. So generally, I don't think such cases will remain here. But I'm just as an example, I'm telling you how this would work out. And outer would keep both these quantities. Is this uh, is this fairly clear what I'm trying to explain? Maybe I should have another example that explains this. But I hope uh, have I have gotten the point through. Okay. Okay, then let me let me go some ahead. Now, using using this ideas of uh, of filter and group by and merge, we can get very interesting analytics out of our data sets. Okay, so what analytics we can get out of it? Okay, so let me look at this. So, our original movie ID, our original movies uh, data set has movie ID, title, and genres, but we don't have an average rating here. Okay, so we don't know movie ID one. What is the average rating for movie ID? We know within the ratings data set, if I sort through, then for from different users, I can find out for movie ID one, what is the rating they have given? Okay, 
but I don't have it here. What we can do is we can evaluate that from ratings and then merge it with movie ID that I will have, you know, an average rating for each of the movies. And that would be an interesting thing to do. The way we could do it is something like this. So let us, let me uh, see here. So we see the ratings and for ratings, we find out, uh, give me all the rows for movie ID one. Okay. So we see that, okay, there for movie ID one, uh, 57,309 people have rated it. Okay, and they have given different sorts of rating. If I do its mean value, I can find out what is the average rating that people have given for movie ID 1. Okay. I can do that for individual movie, but Pandas gives me an interesting feature, group by. Okay. So I can take the ratings data frame and I can group by movie ID. So when I group by movie ID, what will happen is it will say, okay, for all movie ID ones, I will get one entire group. For all movie ID two, we'll get one entire group. On that group, we are applying some object. Okay, we are applying a transformation. That transformation is we are applying a dot mean. Okay, so for each of those splits, it will find the mean of it. That will give me the average rating. When we say as index is equal to false, it will return to me. Let me split this and show what it does here. So when we execute the first part, okay, let us give it some time because the rating data set is a big data set. It, what it does, it, it says, okay, for movie ID and for these user IDs, so this is the mean of the user IDs. Interestingly, that, that is not what we, we are wanting, right? We are wanting only the mean of the ratings. Mean of the user IDs is absolutely meaningless for us. That is why we will not, uh, or here the next command is I delete user ID. But we could we we are taking the mean of the entire thing, keeping movie ID as our base criteria for splitting and grouping. Okay, if you mean all the user IDs, this is what we get. If you mean all the ratings, this is what we get. Now we are interested in this part. Okay. Then we delete uh, from average ratings. We delete the column user ID, so that is gone. And when we just look at the head here, we see that average ratings is what we have. We have. For this movie ID, this is the average rating. This movie ID, this is the average rating and so on. Now we can merge this resulting data frame, which is called as average ratings. We can merge this with the movie data frame. We take the movies data frame, dot merge. So movies is the left data frame. Average rating is the right data frame. And we merge it on the column movie ID. And we want to do an inner join. When we do that, we see that we get another data frame, we call it box office. And it has an additional column called as a rating, which is the average rating by thousands and millions of different users. Okay. So we see that Toy Story has a rating of 3.8, Jumanji has a rating of 3.25 and so on. Okay. Uh, does this example make sense? Okay, great. So once we have it here, then we can use filters and get more interesting things. So we want to say, okay, which of the movies in box office have a rating of greater than or equal to four? Okay. So which of the movies have a rating of greater than or equal to four? We can extract that using box office rating greater than or equal to four. That is, is highly rated. And for this range of is highly rated, we can find out, okay, let me find what are the first five indexes we have. So for the first five indexes, we can do colon five. And when we execute that, we see, okay, the first five movies are, uh, so first five means I'm not talking about top five. I'm talking about the first five in, in, the, in the list of movies. We have these ranges. We have Persuasion at, uh, in 1995, which has a rating of 4.03 and so on. Okay. Similarly, if I want the last five, I can say, okay, from, minus five till the end. Give me the list of movies. And this was the last five movies that have a rating of 4.0 or greater. Okay. If you want to see how many are there, we can do a dot shape and we can see, okay, there are 4,697 movies which have ratings greater than equal to 4.0. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. 
now we if you are interested is and okay what are the movies which have a genre of comedy so we can take the box office what genres and using that i say you know provide comedy and we say okay this is the is comedy boolean filter and for that filter we can see that first five movies so we can see okay the first five comedy movies are here and we have already seen is highly rated now we can combine these two criteria okay we want to see which are the top comedy movies uh, which are also highly rated we are now combining these two criteria together that is from the box office we have two boolean transformations is comedy and is highly rated if we do an and operation on these two and get the first five movies this is what we said okay so we see eat drink man woman some chinese movie i am guessing is a comedy movie with a rating of 4.0 or higher okay so now we can do multiple criteria here so we were able to do that you see we we started off with fairly different data sets different data frames and by using pandas we could group them in in different ways uh, and we could merge them to get very useful analytics out so now we can uh, then apply filters and get uh, comedy movies or animation movies or adventure movies which are highly rated and so on uh, i hope hope this idea is clear right uh, how useful group by is maybe when we actually come to problem statements and uh, so far we are just looking at the tools uh, without knowing what the application area would be and when we uh, move to more of data science when we look at use cases i hope that this concept will be make we will start making some more sense because we'll focus on what we needs to be done and then we'll focus on how pandas is able to do it uh is there no questions we'll go ahead to parsing time stamps is that okay okay great yes. so earlier in in the class uh, in this in this place we had skipped time stamp because we said we will not focus on time stamp but now let's look at time stamp and let's see how we can use time stamp to get some things out okay so time stamps are common generally they are common in sensor data where uh, yes, uh, we are recording some sensor values and we have also a sense of when the, the when that recording was done okay and that comes as time stamps so in our case we will revisit our tax data set and we'll read the time stamps also so uh, i'll reload the tax data set here and if i look at head we see that okay there is a time stamp available if we see what are the data types so we see that user id movie id are integers makes sense tags are object which are string values and time stamp is also interpreted as integers okay now these integers are is a huge number like this and what this number represents is it represents the num the time in seconds from midnight coordinated universal time that is from midnight of january 1 1970 these many seconds have elapsed when this was recorded okay so we have the total number of seconds uh, uh, from this date till when this uh, data was recorded okay so now okay this is useful but this is hardly readable okay so i looking at this i cannot tell uh, which uh, year or which day or at what time this was recorded so we need some way of converting this time stamp into something that is humanly readable this is fine for the computer the computer has no problem with this reading this time stamp but uh, when we want to display our results or when we want to analyze something we need to convert this into you know some a date time structure so we do that using something called as two date time and two date time is a pandas function so within pd uh, pandas we call the two date time function and to this function we can provide that what we want to convert so we want to convert tags within tags time stamp is a column that we want to convert and the unit is seconds okay so we know that this time stamp was collecting information in seconds and that is what we will provide to it when we provide to it this thing it returns to us a series object and we are storing that series object into tags past time okay so this is if you do a help on two date time we can get these things so these are certain uh, 
uh, more par, 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 uh, more arguments or parameters that we can apply. So I'll skip this for now. Uh, when you when I look at the result tags past data time, uh, tags past time, uh, there are two major data types that it can have depending upon what is the hardware that you're running on. Okay, so we have the data type either date time sixty four NS. Uh, and this maps to less than M8 NS or greater than M8 NS, depending upon your hardware. Okay. So when I run this on my system, I can see I get a hardware uh, based on my hardware. I get this zero type less than M8 NS. Okay. Or depending, maybe when you run on your system, depending upon your hardware, this may be different things. So I'll execute this and then execute this part. Now, uh, if I look at the head of tags, I can see what result it has written. So this timestamp has has been converted to human readable values, which looks like this. So this was 13th of August 2015 at 125 in the 125 in the afternoon and 55 seconds is what this timestamp represents. Okay, and this data type past time is a date time object from pandas okay. now once we have it in this date time object we can do very interesting things with this okay so here we are trying to filter the past time based on different criteria so we are saying okay for tags in past time uh, whatever filter out those rows which are greater than this date okay so from 1st february 2015 greater than that or after then after first february 2015 find us all the different rows okay and we are putting that filter in greater than t and we are saying okay give me the selected rows by passing this filter inside so when we do that we see that uh, of the total shapes we get these many shapes or from the total rows these are the number of rows that are satisfying this criteria and I have not printed this, so let me print some values to see how this looks like. Okay. So when we do selected rows, and let's say let's do a head on this, we can see okay that we have some rows uh, here, and we can be sure that all of these dates will be greater than this first Feb 2015. Okay. These are some of the rows that we have selected. Now we can also sort the table using timestamp. Okay. So we are doing it here. So taking the tags, the, the entire tags data set, and it's saying sort the values by past time in ascending order. So when we do that and we execute it, and we see the first 10 rows, we see that our data starts from the year 2005. Okay, so 24th uh, December 2005 onwards, people have been recording uh, different uh, data. And this has been our first entry. The so user ID one two nine three nine six for the movie ID this uh, has given the tag Monty Python, okay, on this date, and this was our first entry that we have collected. Okay, so probably uh, what this represents is since uh, the user ID is not starting from one, it's fairly advanced. What I think is this website provided the feature of surveying uh, at this date. Okay. Not that the not that the website did not exist. I think the website existed because of which we already have these many. This user ID was already available, and these many movies were already available. But I think this was the time when the tag was applied, or the feature of tagging a different the different uh, entries was applied. So this gives us some idea on how when it start and so on. Now, with this past time, we can do a lot of things. We can ask some questions uh, and uh, try and hope that we can answer those questions using our knowledge of pandas. So a few questions that we can ask is, are movie ratings related to the year of the launch? Okay. So are movie ratings related to the year of the launch? Can you, can maybe one of you guess how would we, how we would try to answer this question? Sonam, Shriva, switch up. Any ideas of how we can answer this question? 
we are, we are asking the question are movie ratings related to the year of the launch okay most of you are silent so e either uh, you have not got pandas very well or uh, uh, something is missing i guess we can check if uh, movie stable eliza mm -hmm. can you yes. hear me Yes, yes, I can hear you. Go on. Yes. If this movie's uh, data frame contains the year of launch data, then we can compare it with the timestamp and check. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Great. Uh, that, that's exactly right. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to go to the movie's data frame. So let me let me put these ideas here. So let's say we say movies dot head from movies dot head. We can find out the launch year by looking at these numbers, right? 1995, 1995, and so on. This would give us the launch year. So we are interested in the launch year. So that is what we've got. Then we need the average movie rating. Okay. So we had created something called as box office. Ah, so box office has both these things. We have the year of launch. And we have the average rating as well. Okay. So now what we have to do is to answer this question, our movie rating related to the year of launch, we, we can probably draw a line plot. Okay. And we, on the X axis, we can have the year of launch like 1995, 1996 and so on from whenever it starts till whenever it ends, that will be on the X axis. And on the Y axis, we can plot the average ratings and we can see this plot. And if this plot shows some relation, that is either it is going up or down, or there are some outliers, that graph can help us to answer this question. Are movie ratings related to the year of launch? Does that make sense? Then looking at that graph, we can answer, we can ask some more questions. So do some years look better for the box office movies than others? So based on that graph, if we have certain high points, we could answer then uh, if, if this is better or not, okay, depending upon, then we can go deeper into analysis and see by this, this first graph is helping us to do something called as uh, descriptive analytics. If you remember, uh, uh, in, in the earlier classes, we talked that there are three types of analytics. There is descriptive analytics, there is predictive analytics, and there's prescriptive analytics and descriptive analytics helps, helps us to answer the question based on the data. What has happened in the past? Predictive analysis will be where we try to model the data using machine learning algorithms and try to predict, okay, if this is what has happened in the past, what will happen in the future? And finally, prescriptive analytics is, which helps us answer the question. If we know what will happen in the future, what advice will we give to our business owner? Okay. What steps can we take? So here, my, the first question helps us give insight into descriptive analytics that is what has happened in the past. Now, based on this data, based on these plots, we can try to look here and say, do some years look better for the box office? Now we are trying to answer why, why is it true? Why, uh, why are some years better than the box office? And probably here, this is where we would probably need the help of our domain expert to answer uh, what could be the reasons. So either the, there are many movies launched that year or uh, people are relatively free or people are motivated by some event that has happened because of which the movies have become, uh, the ratings have been higher and so on, would, would, would uh, be the kind of questions we'll have to look at to answer this question. Okay. Then we see, does any data point seem like an outlier in some sense? So if there are certain ratings, uh, certain years where either it, the rating is too high or too low, we can, we can try and figure out what could be the reasons behind those things. Okay. So, uh, I wanted to put these questions here to just give you a flavor of what data science is about. So even though we did a lot of coding here and we, we are looking at different features on how things can be done and so on, these are just tools for getting things done. Our data science journey would start when we learn to ask questions like these. Okay? So looking at the data, we ask certain interesting questions that will extract some information out. And then we use tools like Pandas, NumPy or Matplotlib to get the answers to these questions. Okay.
I, I hope the, 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 the idea is clear, right? I think we have, we've spent enough time on pandas now. Uh, we're already ending. Uh, we just have five minutes more and more. Uh, I don't want to start uh, matplotlib uh, at this note. Maybe we'll start matplotlib in the next class. Is that fine? And in the meantime, you can go ahead and, uh, and uh, look at the assignments uh, for pandas. That will give us a flavor or give us more practice or exercises that can help us, uh, you know, find out these tools and how to use these tools in different scenarios. Okay, if you don't have any other questions, we'll stop for today. Is that fine? Okay. stop sharing uh, then we'll meet in next class day after tomorrow okay have a great day bye 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 bye